Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing Isden's Kaox Eyes. This is a really popular product from this brand, one of their most popular products. I'm gonna go over the ingredients, what they do, my experience using this product, if I think it's worth it, and you know who I think it might benefit. But before getting into it, give this video a thumbs up if you like hearing about skincare products from a board certified dermatologist. And if you weren't aware, this week is the week of eyes. I am putting out a lot of videos this week on different eye products that I'm reviewing. So definitely make sure you're subscribed and you have your bell notifications on. That way you know as soon as those videos go live. Now, as a disclaimer, I am a huge advocate of keeping your skincare routine minimal, not using a lot of skincare products. And when it comes to the eye area, you really do not need to be using an eye cream. I recognize that a lot of people enjoy using eye creams, but when we're talking about moisturizing the eyelid area, the moisturizer you use on your face should be more than adequate to use around the eyes. However, the eye cream and serum products I'm reviewing in these more recent videos, they have active ingredients that address certain things like uh, dark under eye circles, hyperpigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, certain active ingredients that you may be interested in, Vitamin K or phytonadione, it is an antioxidant and antioxidants in skincare products may help to reduce the burden of oxidative stress upon exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation and pollution, infrared radiation, visible light from the sun that you know, drives stubborn hyperpigmentation which can affect the delicate skin around the eyes. For the longest time, there has been keen interest in using topical vitamin K either to prevent or to accelerate the clearance of post-procedure purpura. Basically, when you go in for like a laser procedure or um, you know, uh, injectables, if you're susceptible to bruising, nobody wants that. So a lot of people in the realm of you know, aesthetic medicine have always been you know, talking about using topical vitamin K to improve that. And truthfully, the research behind that is pretty limited, although it exists. There are some uh, clinical studies showing that topical vitamin K can actually accelerate the rate of clearance of post-procedural purpura, meaning you know, bruising. Uh, and that's kind of where the research for vitamin K um, stops in skincare products is, is there. Um, it, it really hasn't been rigorously tested for improving dark under eye circles. Where it kind of feeds into potentially addressing dark under eye circles is the fact that for some people, dark under eye circles, their appearance is aggravated by fluid accumulation and the leakage of uh, inflammatory mediators that leads to kind of a discoloration, almost bruise-like, the breakdown of things like blood, almost, almost akin to a bruise. So the idea here is that perhaps you could get better clearance of that, improving dark under eye circles. Phytonadione, <laughs> it's a mouthful, um, epoxide or oxide, is a, my understanding is an expensive ingredient to work with, um, but in contrast to vitamin K alone, the um, oxide, the oxide or epoxide, it's a metabolite of vitamin K. And in contrast to just straight up vitamin K, it's a lot more stable, uh, less susceptible to degradation from heat, uh, more stable in the presence of UV, and it's less allergenic and has better penetration into the skin for better outcomes. But it's the oxide epoxide form that you should be looking for based on what limited research we do have. Vi vitamin K eye creams that have this ingredient, they're not easy to, easy to come by. Um, a while ago, I did a video reviewing the role of vitamin K for dark under eye circles and you know vitamin K creams for dark under eye circles. So check that out. But now dark under eye circles, you know, products, they can only really do so much and they don't help the majority of people. They're not gonna take them away completely. Most dark under eye circles are the result of your anatomy, whether it be genetic or age related changes. The eye socket shape, um, perhaps some volume loss around the eyes, descent of the cheek, um, that's gonna result in more prominent hollows. But in people who, for example, deal with seasonal allergies, they're rubbing their eyes a lot, uh, they have some fluid accumulation there, the inflammatory cells from all that rubbing and whatnot are, are seasonal allergies. 
Uh, there can be some breakdown and almost pseudo bruise-like type of discoloration that appears. And in theory, vitamin K may help accelerate the clearance of that as it has been shown to help accelerate the, uh, clear, the clearance of post-procedural purpura in a few limited small clinical studies. This product also has ascorbic acid, otherwise known as vitamin C. Now that is an ingredient that may help in not only reducing uh, uh, the formation of free radicals that damage proteins and collagens, contributing to the formation of fine lines, wrinkles, as well as hyperpigmentation, but ascorbic acid may get into the skin and help improve collagen synthesis. However, it is a tricky ingredient to work with. It's not the most stable thing in the world and its penetration in the skin is limited. It's a water loving ingredient, uh, but that's in there. And this also has uh, two peptides, uh, palmitoyl tripeptide one and palmitoyl tetrapeptide seven. These two peptides are what are in Matrixol 3000, if you're familiar with that. Uh, one is a collagen fragment. The idea is that by applying it to the skin, it may stimulate your body's um, collagen repair pathways and production of more collagen. And the other one inhibits something, uh, the production of something called IL-6, which is inflammatory. And the idea is that these two peptides together may help in improving the health of your collagen, collagen repair and production of new collagen and elastin. But again, as I always point out, when it comes to peptides and skincare products, the research is pretty limited, largely confined to industry studies, not peer reviewed. At the end of the day, peptides and skincare products, they are humectants, meaning they help to improve the water content in the top layers of the skin. And ultimately that does have a wrinkle smoothing effect. So they're good ingredients to have in skincare products provided you tolerate them, including products to be used to the delicate skin of the eyelids because they can improve hydration and the, the moisture content. And ultimately that helps as well in improving the natural exfoliation around the eyes. Ultimately that also helps improve natural epidermal cell turnover, uh, AKA exfoliation. Speaking of improving the moisture content, this also has hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, another humectant. Uh, that helps improve the moisture content of the top layers of the skin. Now, hyaluronic acid does enhance penetration of other ingredients, so that can be a good thing uh, if you're looking to improve uptake, but it also can make things more irritating. So some people don't tolerate it. If you don't tolerate hyaluronic acid, this is not gonna be the product for you. Unfortunately, this product does have fragrance in it, which is a bit of a surprise to me because most eye products, they typically don't have fragrance. Fragrance, I pointed this out in numerous videos. You can develop an allergy to it, uh, or you know, fragrance is an umbrella term for a variety of different compounds, which are proprietary, and you never really know exactly always what is in, in fragrance. But you, you certainly can develop an allergy to fragrance. It's the most common uh, cosmetic contact allergen. When we're talking about the delicate skin around the eyelids, more likely to develop allergies to things that you put there. So just be aware of that. It can be irritating. Um, but a lot of people enjoy fragrance in their skincare and they have no issues using it, including you know around their eyes or whatever. I just point that out. But in my experience using this product, the fragrance was limiting to me in my use of this. Like I, it is very strong and headache inducing, very headache inducing, makes my eyes water. I actually cannot tolerate this product because of the fragrance. Um, it is very strong. Um, I use their sunscreen. Isden has a sunscreen as a side note, which I, I really love. They have a tinted one and a non-tinted one. I love them both. I reviewed them as a side note. If you're interested in that, check that video out. Both of those sunscreens have fragrance, does not have this lingering headache inducing effect as this eye cream does. So for that reason, I can't tolerate using it at all. I have powered through using it a few times. I do like the texture, the consistency. It is moisturizing without being greasy or heavy. Um, how do you use this? You're gonna apply it after cleansing and you can apply other products on over it, but they do suggest you apply this first. And if you're using some other serum that you apply that on over it. But personally, you know, if you're using this, in my opinion, you should be able to get away with just using this alone to your eyes and it's moisturizing. Um, I don't think that you need another product. Um, you're gonna squeeze it, squeeze the product out. They make a big to do about this cooling ceramic tip. 
But when you squeeze the product out, I find this to be the case with a lot of these types of applicators, that's too much for one eyelid. You really only need a rice grain worth of product for your eyes. I mean, you really don't need much at all. I think most people, when they're using eye creams or whatever, I do think they get too much volume and they end up wasting the product. You only need like a tiny rice grain. So that one pump should be more than enough for both eyes. So I found myself more often than not, when I did use this, squeezing it out and then putting it on my finger and then taking it to my eyes, which is fine to do, but they make a big to-do about the cooling ceramic applicator. Personally, I did not find the applicator to be cooling or useful at all. This is a really well-regarded product. Like it's gotten an award, and yes, I know that those awards, um, I think they're often bought. <laughs> And to a certain extent, um, you know, how genuine they are, how reflective they are of actual consumer preference, I have no idea. You know, like the Shape Award, or the Self Award, or magazines will give out these, these awards of, you know, like the best eye cream of 2021 or whatever. I think they got one of those awards. And honestly, you know, I don't know why this product, in my opinion, is not enjoyable to use and I did not notice any difference other than my eyes watering more because the fragrance is so strong. And if you are dealing with um, worsening of the appearance of dark circles as it relates to like allergies and runny eyes, then this is going to be counterproductive. Not to mention the elephant in the room. This product is $97. What? That is insane, $97. Yes, I did pay that for this product. Um, I don't recommend you guys do that though. I don't, I honestly, and I know people, you know, skincare is this individualized thing and people like what they like and they, you know, some people don't mind spending a lot of money, but realistically, I cannot in good faith recommend you guys go out and spend that kind of money on this product. Um, vitamin K for dark circles, sure. It shows promise, logical steps there. The peptides, the hyaluronic acid, you can get that in other eye creams. As a matter of fact, later this week, I'm going to be reviewing a much more affordable drugstore eye cream that has those peptides, has hyaluronic acid. I think it's a much better price point. So stay tuned for that, but at the end of the day, no. In my opinion, just my opinion, it's not fact or anything, I don't think this is worth $97. And I can barely tolerate having it on my skin because of the headache inducing fragrance. Let me know in the comments though, is this a product that you have purchased and used and loved and if it's you know benefited you in any way, shape or form, but um, in my opinion, no. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. Now on the end slate, I'm going to put my recent review of the L'Oreal Paris Revitalift Hyaluronic Acid Plus Caffeine Hydrating Eye Serum. Whew, that is a mouthful. So check that video out if you are interested in that product. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.